welcome my amazing viewers thank you so much for joining me on my program once again i appreciate you wherever you are connecting from if you have not subscribed to my channel please kindly subscribe to my channel click the notification bell so that you be notified each time i upload a video you will be among the first to receive it thank you so much and remember this whenever you look my video whenever you watch my video share the video to all platforms share it to family and friends share it in your whatsapp group so that people can get information on what is happening in the contraption called nigeria mainly against the beer france against the Duduans, against the indigenous people in the country called nigeria i try as much as possible to set the record straight i don't preach hate speech i don't speak against people i set the record straight the only important thing i do here is to make sure that the plight of the people remains on the front corner and the world will know the true story of what is going on in the country called nigeria remember they will always change the narrative the government will always try as much as possible to use the conventional media to change the narrative but that i will not allow in this platform we set the record straight and we say it the way it is. Not preaching his speech, not by talking down to anybody, but setting the record straight and bringing the information to the front corner and letting the world know the exact situation of things. Each time you watch my video, you can equally go to the comment section. Put down your comments. Say it the way you feel it. It's so welcome. You can criticize if you so desire, but do it constructively so that we can be able to learn from one another. That is why I'm here. And now, I'm going to share with you a very important video. I hope after watching the video from the beginning to the end, you're going to enjoy the video. And you continue to stick around and be able to enjoy the rest of videos that are going to be coming your way from time to time. Thank you so much for coming. Today, the video I'm going to share with you is a very important video. My guest, Dr. Hakim Baba Ahmed, spokesperson of the Northern uh, Elders Forum, John Spinal. Thank you so much for coming over. Thank you very much for inviting me. Thank you. Now, we have a whole lot of issues to uh, dwell on. Uh, let's start with politics. Uh, the president, we had wrote to INEC uh, seeking clarification, advance, and guardians on issue of uh, direct primaries uh, to be made compulsory for political parties. Uh, what do you make out of it? You were at INEC as a secretary before. Uh, what do you make out of this? Are, are we in a position to embrace direct primary? The vast majority of Nigerians understand the value of these amendments, um, transmission of elections, direct primaries, and many others. Um, the only people against it are people who are used to the old system uh, that truncates the quality of our democratic process, deprives the people from getting good quality representation, um, hijacking the political process, using money. Um, those are the people who are doing that. And the president should not play into their hands. The president should sign this. I, if he wants clarification, he should get clarification quickly. But if these are delaying tactics, the president will leave a terrible legacy on Nigeria. So there were some people. Some people are saying uh, in 2019, the president's uh, primary that he won to pick the ticket of the APC was through, through direct primary. If within his party. Then, yes, within his party. Within his party. Yes. And he was the only candidate. Mm. And nobody stood against him. Mm -hmm. So that's not a test of the direct primary. Okay. It, it means nothing, actually. This is applicable to all political parties. And in simple terms, it says every member of a party should now participate in the election of people who should be their flag bearer, from the lowest to the highest point. There's not a big deal about it. People raise all sorts of issues. It is difficult to manage. It is problematic. You will have security issues. These are just diversions. We have elections. Direct primaries don't have much difference between that. They say, oh, you don't have, uh, you don't have security. If anybody is going to disrupt, if anybody is going to cause a problem for direct primaries, it will be the very people who are now saying don't sign it. It will be people who have money to hire thugs. It will be people who have money to di uh, disperse crowds. But every community knows who is a member of APC or PDP or another party. Every little community. Polling units, from polling units to the national level. You can have pri direct primaries. It is the best way to go. Nobody is against it except those people who do not want to improve the democratic process. And the president is at the, in the middle of this. Mm. If he doesn't sign this, it just simply means he's pandering to governors and a few other powerful interests who don't want a change and an improvement in our electoral process. That is as simple as that. And he said they have quite powerful people and they will great influence and apply so much pressure on the president. This is the time for him. Uh, uh, to stand firm, isn't it? The, yeah, of course. This is the time for the president to stand firm. But whether he does it or not, <coughs> Nigerians will read uh, very clear meanings. He says he wants to leave a legacy of an improved electoral process. This is the time for him to, to uh, redeem his, his commitments. He says his only legacy 
And it's a good thing he's saying that because he doesn't have many of these legacies to leave behind. He has a chance to actually leave a legacy for improved electoral process. And he should do that. He owes the country the responsibility to do this. And but now, now we know who are the enemies of democracy. We know the people who are against improving the democratic process. And we know that 99% of Nigerians want this. So the president has a very clear choice. Go with the people or go with the people who don't want him to improve the electoral process. It's really that clear. Now, the president has another big decision to take. Uh, he put that he stayed in, made a request for the release of Ennam Dekano, and he said it's a heavy one, but he will consider it. Some groups in the north have said this president shouldn't dare. How, how, what I wouldn't say he shouldn't dare. We said he shouldn't do it because it is, um, it would be very dangerous precedent. Um, it would be dangerous for the country. The statement we released yesterday was very clear. We said the country is already facing a huge amount of challenges. Releasing Namdi Kanu because but some people have said, okay, okay, forgive the boy, he's a young man, he's saying all the wrong things. Um, give us, give us uh, Namdi Kanu, he will not be a problem for you. Um, we'll, be, we'll be playing into the hands of um, people, again, who are already threatening the corporate existence, the inter territorial integrity, the peace and stability of Nigerians. And we advise that the president shouldn't do that. He will be breaching a fundamental principle of the democratic, of, of the constitutionalism, which is separation of powers. He will be intervening in a judicial process which is in course. He has gone down a record of refusing to allow even people who, who, whose bail has been ordered by, uh, the same courts. by courts. Um, there's no reason the, the Igbo elders, with due respect to them, have given to the president. Other than that, they will, um, they will, look, they will make sure that uh, Namdi Kanu does not cause a problem. There's nothing on the ground that suggests that he will not do that. He's caused so much problem, including running away from Bay. We, we have weighed this. We didn't say anything between the time the president said, I'll consider it, until yesterday when we released our statement. So it's a measured statement. We took note of the values of political settlement of issues. We considered options. We considered the merit of the case. And we came out and said, don't do it. And the president was wrong to have said there and then that I'll consider it because he gave all the right reasons why it is not fair to ask a president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria who has sworn by the Quran, he would swear by the Bible if he's a Christian, that he will defend the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, he will protect the rights of all Nigerians to peace and security. For him to say, I can't do this, you are tying my hands up, and then say, I'll consider it. Consider what? So now he has, he's boxed himself into a corner. We have people there jubilating and say, ah, the president says he will consider it. Now, if the president comes out later and says, I'm sorry, gentlemen, I've considered your request. I'm not going to stop the elections of Namdi Kanu, no matter what the benefits you are saying exist. I'm going to allow him. I'm going to, yes, the trial. I'm going to allow him to prove whether he did these things where the state is alleging him to have done or not. And if he's found guilty at the end of it, then uh, he has to pay the price. The, now, the, the presidents, the governors have the powers using attorney general uh, to terminate whatever trial going yes, on. They no don't let prosecute. It's have been applied in the past. Yes, so what stops the president from using it? Nothing. Time? Nothing except that there could be stronger reasons than entering a only prosecute uh, and stopping the trial. And they exist. You have to weigh the consequences. And one of the consequences is that if the president says, uh, yes, Nandi Kanu can walk free, um, wipe, wipe out all the things he's done, and then he says to him, go forth and, and sin no more, um, he's, he'll be opening the doors for a lot of other people who are genuinely threatening the country. There are huge numbers of threats to this country. Nandi Kanu is not the only threat. Now, uh, what stops other people from coming forward to say, oh, Mr. President, you know, the, the bandits have, uh, have um, uh, maybe they had a reason for being bandits. And there are um, calls out towards that regard. Yes, the Boko Haram people have been fighting for 12 years. They couldn't have been fighting for nothing. They have issues. Mr. President, please, let's have a political solution to this. Um, Mr. President, there are other criminals who are causing problems. There, let's, have, let's apply a political solution to everything. Political solutions have merits, but the foundations of a political solution are entirely different. And you have to weigh them in a way that suggests that, yes, they, they are genuine solutions. There's a win-win in all of it. 
and the judicial process is not necessarily the best. In this instance, the political solution just isn't available. There's no one in the southeast today that can say, give me Namdi Kanu, and I'll keep him shut, shut up, I'll keep him uh, quiet, and I'll wipe out all the things they've done. They've killed soldiers, they've killed policemen, they've killed prison warders. Yesterday, some of the ESN people who owe allegiance to him mm. um, killed people. But, but I, I, you know, uh, IPOB has always denied all, all these killings. Yes, they would. Would they? Do you think IPOB would own up to the fact that they are going around killing people? How about the state of home order? How about destroying the economy of the Southeast? How about these horrible things they are doing to the people of the Southeast? They are Nigerians, you know, and it, they had us. Everything that happens to the South it affects every Nigerian. This is not just an issue between IPOP and Nigeria, ESN and Nigeria, Ibo and Nigeria. This is a Nigerian problem. Mm -hmm. It affects us. Uh, some people say it, this problem would have been nipped in the board or managed if the president had opened doors for negotiations that he didn't open. That perhaps uh, this may present an opportunity to open up doors for dialogue and there's every need for dialogue where every aggrieved person who come to the table and trash these issues up. Fine. Uh, like I said, there's, every sensible person will tell you negotiation is good, political settlements are good, mm -hmm. um, conflicts are, are, are better resolved through negotiations. There's no, 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 nothing wrong with that. Um, but you have to look at whether all parties are interested and if all parties see something to, be, to, gain, to be gain and benefit from that. I hope under Kanu never really um, put forward anything to negotiate. There are th three demands. We don't want to be part of Nigeria. If Nigeria insists on keeping us, we will force ourselves out. We will cause as much trouble as possible and we will force ourselves out. And we will make it impossible for the Igbo to live a life of peace and prosperity because that's their primary t uh, uh, constituency. That's not acceptable. Their yeah, major demand is r a referendum. Yes, but they're not the only people who want that. Now, a better informed group um, would say, who else is interested in a referendum? There could be other groups in this country who say, inside a referendum, look, a referendum in itself is not a bad thing. There are many countries that have referendum in their constitution that That's says right, yeah. any group can opt out of this federation or whatever, or any country, but you have to go through a number of steps. And there are many groups who have said, it's not a bad idea, but it has to be put on the table. It has to be exercised. You go to the Constitutional, you go to the National Assembly and to the President and say, Mr. President, insert a clause for a referendum so that people can go. The Kanu and the Co are not the only people who think that their people are better off outside Nigeria. There are many others. So there are, there are ways. You don't go around killing soldiers and policemen and burning and, and tying up uh, five states every Monday and say, everybody sit at home. You can't go out just simply because you want a referendum. So, so, so some of the uh, leaders from the South East that are supportive of a political solution have said the president or the federal government, as it were, is also in the process and implementing amnesty for Boko Haram members that are killing, destroying, including security agencies and all that, through his uh, uh, safe corridor and uh, the repent of Boko Haram that if such a privilege could be extended to this group, why should the government not do the same? Well, yeah, two things side. about this. One, you know, <laughs> coming from the north, I can tell you the, the people of the north are more de vehement about making sure that the government does not do anything that rewards people in Boko Haram who have been killing our people for the last 12 years. We are more adamant about this than anybody else because we are the people who feel where it pinches. So, if the military retrieves people who say they, well, they are Boko Haram and say we want to repent, and they, they put them in, in some kind of detention, safe corridor in Gombe, um, or, or some kind of detention, um, that's a different thing from saying we are contemplating forgiving them. But all sorts of spin have been applied to this issue. Our position is that if people break the law willingly in this country, irrespective of whether they're Boko Haram or IPOP or ESN or Igbo's people, people break the law of this country, kill Nigerians, um, maim Nigerians, destroy our economy, destroy our peace of mind because they want to achieve political objective, they should be put 
that they should they should be subjected to the laws of the land irrespective of where they come from groups should not assume responsibility for speaking for people who break the law it's the easterners who have suffered more from the activities of ipop than anybody else northerners have paid a huge price for the activities of boko haram and bandits and kidnappers why on earth would anybody say forgive this let them just walk away free their own communities don't want them not to talk of the whole north but you have all this propaganda going yes. around people saying oh okay bandits um, and uh, Boko Haram are being forgiven by who how how mm -hmm. they, they may be in a safe corridor th they are being uh, uh, rehabilitated they are being uh, reformed and they are being reintegrated into the society what we hear what we <laughs> but that's our one part I know you read of the Sulu uh, Sulu uh, plot that uh, the government has not uh, accepted or rejected that. Uh, even the UN made reference to that. There's another program where commanders of the Boko Haram are also being paid money to stop fighting. Well, again, you are going to hear all sorts of things. Like I said, the bottom line is this. 90% of Boko Haram, at least the Nigerians one amongst them, come from communities. We don't know any Boko Haram person who has been released, untested, untried, uninterrogated into the community. And the community says, oh, welcome back, the killer, former killer. Come and stay here. In fact, what we hear is that communities themselves are saying, don't ever bring these people close by. We remember what they did to us. We remember how some of them even killed their parents. Don't do that. And I'm speaking to you as somebody who comes from the north. And the Northern Elders Forum keeps a very, very close eye on some of these developments. But there is a lot of, uh, there are a lot of people who, who, who throw these things up. And they say, oh, they are forgiving them. If the military says, we have retrieved people who we think are Boko Haram, mm -hmm. who say, we will, um, we will stop fighting, and the military puts them within a military process, a mi the code safe corridor is actually a military process. It assesses whether these are these people were were Boko Haram first of all, because there are a lot of people in detention who were never Boko Haram people. Sort out those who are Boko Haram and those who are, who are not Boko Haram. Treat them according to um, uh, the law of the land, and that's what we're saying. And more importantly, we're saying, please, the federal government should prosecute Boko Haram people to the degree that they find them guilty. Mm -hmm. I mean, they, will fi they find them culpable of certain things. Why aren't we seeing Boko Haram people being tried? Why don't we see bandits being tried? Why don't we see kidnappers being tried? Why don't we see ESN people being tried? Why so don't we see... I, I yes. Mm. Thank you so much for your patience to watch from the beginning to the end. I hope you have learned something from the video you have just watched. The video you have just watched is to bring information to your doorstep and for educational purposes. It is not to demonize anybody. Let us watch continuously and see who can be able to make a sense out of every nonsense we are seeing. We must continue. We move. It doesn't matter what they do. It doesn't matter what they say. They will kill us. We will kill them. At the end of the day, Biafra is here. Thank you for watching. If you have not subscribed to the channel, please kindly subscribe to the channel. Click the notification bell so that you are notified each time I upload a video. You will be among the first to receive it. Thank you and remain blessed. Bye bye. See you again.